Welcome to Park Sean McDermott, uh, where Galway have finished second in Group 2 of the All-Ireland Series. That's because they've been beaten by Armagh, 16 points to 112. A really dramatic game here, and combined with Westmead's draw against Tyrone, that means that Armagh topped the group, Galway are second, and uh, Tyrone are third. So Armagh goes straight through to the quarterfinals, while Galway get a home preliminary quarterfinal. The draw for those preliminary quarterfinals will be made tomorrow. Colin Boyle, formerly of Mayo, is with me for this uh, chat. Colin, before we start on this game, what about Mayo today? I know you didn't see all the game because you were on your way here, but a disappointing defeat to Cork and it means that uh, Mayo get an extra game that perhaps they didn't really want or need. Hugely disappointing day, Oshin. Yeah, for Mayo, from a Mayo point of view, it's funny, when I got here to the press box uh, before today's game to go in Armagh, Mayo were after going six points clear, went out and chatted to a few boys outside and I got told they were a point down and that was just 10 minutes later. So I'm not sure what exactly, exactly happened there, but that's a crazy turnaround in a short space of uh, time. But I think Mayo today, they were being frustrated defensively by Cork, but it seemed like that the hard work done when you go six points up in a game like that to, to, to concede a lead like that it's a bad defeat for Mayo there's no doubt about it but it's the way you lose games as well can hurt even more and I think that's going to hurt them going into this week they've no time to think about it that's, that's the thing with everything that's after happening today all the dramatics obviously the draw that's tomorrow they're in a prelim quarter final they didn't think they'd be there but that's where they are so they've got to reset themselves now it was a beautiful day here when we got here. Now, as you can potentially hear or possibly hear, there's thunder and maybe lightning. I'm not looking. I don't want to look. I'm afraid of it. I don't. You're my thunder buddy. Uh, what about Mayo, just before we move on to this game? Is it a good thing or a bad thing that they have an extra game? Because you've been part of these crazy Mayo summers before. We're like Juggernaut in X-Men. I'm not sure if you're a comic book nerd. The more they move, the more momentum they create and the stronger they actually get. So more, more games could be a, a good thing. Yeah, look, you're right. We have been involved in this in the past, but that's through the qualifiers. This is very, very different now. This group stage format, this is Mayo's second defeat in the championship, you know. So even from a, a confidence point of view, a psychological point of view, getting beaten Roscommon, getting beaten by Cork, two teams who played very similar style on the, on the day that they've beaten you, they're going to take a serious confidence hit now. So they're going into next week's game now, really with their backs against the wall, going up against a team, a second place team, who's after coming off the, the, the back of a big, big win. OK, so they're going to have to turn the tables. It's not just that, though. Even if they do get over that game, it's, just, it's going into a uh, quarter-final the following week against a Dublin, against, Ar against Armagh, against a Derry. You know what I mean? So that's going to be a big, big ask. But look, at that's down the line. They have to get there first. OK, let's talk about this game. Armagh beating Galway 16 points to 112. Galway leading by two at the break, one five to six points. Sean Kelly with a wonderful goal. He cut mm. through the Armagh defence. He was let go by Soupy Campbell. To be fair, outside of that, Soupy had a great game. Yeah. Just before that, they missed a the penalty. Ethan Rafferty making a good save from Shane Walsh. Galway against the breeze in the first half. So you thought, well, they're two points up having been against the breeze. They'll surely drive it home now. They didn't. Armagh started like a, a train in the second half. Three points unanswered. And of course, you spotted it. Charlie Oak Burns brought on to man Mark Killian McDade. McDade had scored two points before that front play. Had ran the show. After that, he was very quiet. He was hugely, and he was hugely in Linswell in the first half as well with Sean Kelly that you mentioned there. It was a funny first half in regards that Armagh had the breeze, but they really just set back to inside their 45 and let Galway play around. And even though they had huge numbers back, Galway did create them two huge goal chances, obviously the penalty where, where Sean Kelly was brought down. And then only a couple of minutes later, Kelly just walls through the, the mad defence where you mentioned Supi Campbell just got caught defensively and stuck it in the back of the net. So Port Joyce would have been absolutely delighted at half time. Breeze at the backs in the second half and I think he would have expected his team to drive on but the huge switch was uh, you mentioned it there Charlie O'Burns coming into mid uh, to midfield to pick up Killian McDade it was very similar in that first half from a Mar point of view to the Ulster final against Derry where Brendan Rodgers just ran the show from midfield they just simply didn't have the legs in the middle of the pitch to stick with them the same thing was happening with them out here with McDade and, and Kelly as well from the back Charlie O'Burns made so not only did he nullify McDade but he put Goy on the back foot going the other way and they were, they, it was very clear that they got on top on Conor, Conor Cleason's kickouts as well. And it just gave them that bit of momentum. I think they got the first three points of the second half. A couple of them were just long balls in on top of Andrew Mernon. He wins one of them, gets a mark. He wins another one, they get a free. Turbo kicks over the bar. And all that does, Oshin, is create a bit of momentum. Create a bit of a buzz in the crowd. Suddenly, there are mass supporters on the feet. Suddenly, they're pressurising the goal with kickout. Suddenly, they're, they just have the momentum and they continue that through the second half. Granted, go away. You know, it was nip or tuck all the way through the second half and Galway got themselves back into the game and they probably would have felt maybe with 10 minutes ago that they'd seen out the storm, you know, no puns intended, but, you know, but that's finished. What a, what a dramatic finish the game. It was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And let's talk through that finish to the yeah. game. I think it was um, Mernon got a point from play. Mm. 
And then Grugan had that free, which he nailed. Yeah. Uh, that was a big moment for him as well, because he missed an important mark in the Ulster final, so maybe that would have been playing on his mind. I spoke to him immediately after the game. He said he didn't know what was at stake as in topping the group, yeah. but he did know after when they were defending that last play from Galway. Yeah, that, that's absolutely nuts because we weren't even sure at the time what was happening. It was very interesting the lead up to that free um, that Andrew Mernon gets. Galway are playing the ball over and back here. They're trying to create a scoring opportunity and Mernon intercepts the ball just outside the uh, Armagh 45. He runs all the way up the pitch with it. I think it's a very, very soft free, to be honest with you. I think it gets a slight maybe push in the back from Paul Conroy, I think, as the covering defender. Mernon feels the push. He goes down like probably most, most players would in fairness to Grugan. He, he, he kicks the score really well. Just in that phase of play as well, obviously, we were looking at Sean Kelly an awful lot. He was up and down. It looked like he's picked up a bit of an ankle injury or Achilles injury they finally got him off the pitch but he was really really struggling so that could be a, a big knock on effect for, for Galway going forward but you felt like Joe McQuillan was going to give Galway one more chance even though injury time seemed like it was up and he did Armagh retreat everyone comes back I think it's Keane Hearn comes onto a ball just approaching the Armagh 21 gets hit by uh, Supi Campbell free in and obviously Shane Walsh he's got an awful lot of time to think about, about that free you know it was a difficult free the weather, the rain was coming down at this stage. It was about 10 to 15 metres inside the, inside the line. He goes with the hands, which was interesting as well. And he just never got a hold of it, you know what I mean? And, you know, Armagh, to be honest, on their second half display, they probably just deserve to win it. You get the feeling that Galway actually can recover from this. Yeah. I'm not so sure that would have been the case for Armagh. I think, and they would tell you this themselves, in fact, some of them did, they needed this win. They needed a big win because the Ulster final stung. Mm. They lost a narrow match to Galway on penalties last year. Lost a few matches narrowly this year. Didn't even play well against Westmead when they won. Granted, Westmead, as we saw today against Tyrone, are decent. But this is a big, big win for them, isn't it? Huge win. And funny, I was just talking to the beginning of the upstairs and I said the last real big team our, our man have beaten is Tyrone last year in the Championship. You know what I mean? So they needed this win. I thought they were gone during the week, to be honest. As an All-Ireland contender, I kind of written them off. But to me, that second half, when Armagh played to their strengths, I think that's the key going forward to Armagh, for Armagh. If they play to their strengths, they are capable of beating anyone. And some of the football they played there in that second half was outstanding. OK, Colin Boyle, formerly of Mayo, thanks for joining us here in Park. Sean McDermott today for a dramatic day of football. Armagh beating Galway 16 points to 112. That win combined with Westmead's draw against Tyrone means that Armagh win the group and go straight through to the quarterfinals. Galway and uh, Tyrone go through to the preliminary quarterfinals and Galway will be at home for those. The draw will be made tomorrow morning, that's Monday morning. And uh, Off The Ball AM will keep you in touch uh, with that draw and tell you what happens as it happens. From a rainy and uh, stormy park, Sean McDermott, McDermott, literally and metaphorically, uh, we let you go and say thanks for watching. Bye bye. And don't forget to follow all the Off The Ball social media channels for everything that's going on in the world of sport. <laughs>